Hi there. I am inside of a Jupyter notebook and I'm about to do a small experiment with missing values. This is something that tends to happen often, by the way. You might have a data set with X and Y values, ready for machine learning. And it could be the case that just a few of these values are missing for whatever reason. There might be something with your data collection process. There might be something that's somewhat random, but in any case, some of these values are missing and we kind of need a way to deal with that. We are going to try out a few different approaches, but we will need to have some sort of way to add missing values. And that's what this function does over here. The way that this function does it is it just samples randomly. We're using a random number generator here. We're getting some random integers and there are some indices in the end that we are going to select and we are going to assign a not a number to it. Now, of course, in real life, you are likely not going to have missing features that are going to be this random. There's usually something underlying that's causing values to be missing. But just for illustrative purposes, I'm going to be using this one function to turn some of this uh, data that comes out of the standard make classification function in scikit-learn. And I'm going to be using this function to just get myself a data set over here with some values that are missing. When I have a look at this generated data set, then I can confirm that there are indeed some missing values here and there. And I can also confirm that in total, there's about seven and a half thousand values missing. Seven and a half thousand, by the way, sounds like a lot when we're considering 10,000 examples. But one thing to remember is that the seven and a half thousand is out of 10,000 times 20, which is about 200,000 features. So. There's definitely going to be lots of rows that are suffering from a missing value, but there's still going to be plenty of information that is still in this data set. So you could theoretically still do some machine learning. There's still a lot of data to learn from, but there is just enough data missing for it to be, shall I say, annoying and something you have to deal with. And here's a standard way that you could go about it. What you could do is you could make a pipeline where there is a pre-processing step that uses a imputer. Scikit-learn has support for a few of these imputers, but the whole point of a imputer pre-processing step is that they use some sort of a technique to remove the missing values and typically they replace them with something else. In the default settings that I've got over here, this simple imputer will just take each column, calculate the mean, and if there's a missing value, it will be replaced by the mean. Now, one thing about this imputing step before I move on it does deserve to be recognized that just replacing a missing value with a mean is a little bit dangerous. You are going to be putting something of an assumption in here that the machine learning model is going to learn from. However, in this particular case, if you'd really want to use the logistic regression over here, that's a model that can't really deal with missing values. So if this component wasn't in this pipeline, this logistic regression would just throw an error. However, when I have a pipeline like this with the imputer, I can go ahead and uh, run this block of code. At the bottom over here, I'm doing some cross-validation and we can have a look at the scores and we can judge how well the model's doing. However, there are also other ways of dealing with missing values. One approach, perhaps if you're interested in using this model, is to maybe not use a imputer whatsoever and to just make sure that all the data that you feed the pipeline has all the missing values removed. That said, perhaps an even better solution is to go for a machine learning model that just internally has a mechanism to deal with the missing values in a reliable way. And this histogram boosted classifier is one of those models. So below over here, I have again made a pipeline in this case, the pipeline doesn't have a imputing step. It is really just using the histogram gradient boosting classifier. And if I were to just run this now, then it does take a little bit longer than the logistic regression. That's not a huge surprise. The logistic regression is a fast algorithm to train. But one thing that we do see is that for this particular example, not only do we not have to worry about the missing values, we also get an algorithm that has pretty good scores. It's stuff like this that, again, makes this stack kind of a gem in the scikit-learn library. Not only does it have good performance, but there's also all these little things like support for missing values that really make this algorithm very convenient. 
However, you might wonder how this algorithm is actually dealing with the missing numbers. So let's just quickly dive into that. So to think about these missing values some more, let's consider how a tree is built. We have an x value that's going to go in, and then the tree is going to introduce some sort of split. And let's say for whatever reason, uh, we're going to split on the second column of the data point that's going in. And we're going to say something like, well, if that's less than 20, uh, then we're going to go into this uh, leaf on the left. And uh, if it's larger than uh, 20, then we're going to go to the right over here. From here, we can kind of get this splitting procedure to repeat itself. But the whole point is that we're going to be uh, choosing the place where we're going to split based on uh, some sort of metric. So in the case of regression, uh, that is typically mean squared error. But there's some sort of number that will inform us on where we should do our splitting. Well, then the big question at this point is, how would missing values really change this? So to understand what might happen if there's a missing value, let's now consider that there's just a couple of rows where the second column, um, that that's like a not a number situation. Then we got to deal with that somehow. To denote this, I'm going to use the red color. But what's effectively going to happen here is that whenever there's a split and if there's missing values involved, then we're just going to send the missing values either to the left-hand side or the right-hand side. And that's pretty much it. Again, we have some sort of a metric like mean squared error that is going to inform us whether or not a split location is going to be quote-unquote good. It's just that in the case of missing values, we're also going to consider that we have to send the missing values to one of the two branches. So let's say that in this particular case, the mean squared error is best if we send all the missing values down to this leaf. Well, the rest of the algorithm really just remains the same. And note that this is something that will hold for the regressor variant, as well as for the classifier variant. Because in both cases, we are going to have a metric that's going to inform us on how to make these splitting decisions. Now at this point, I hope that this explanation sheds a little bit of light in terms of how we can deal with missing values. If there are missing values, the way we do the split is just a bit different. But once that split has happened, we're just going to, again, do the recursive thing and repeat. Given all this, though, what I would now like to do is also just give a little bit of an intuition on why doing this may be preferable to imputing in general. So let's consider just this missing data phenomenon. What might we be dealing with here? Now, it does depend, obviously, but usually there is some sort of a process that generates data. You have sensors in the factory, you have people visiting a website, that kind of stuff. If you were to consider such a process, then you might wonder, well, what might cause missing values to take place? It could be, theoretically, that it's a perfectly random phenomenon that's happening, but my gut would suggest that if there are missing values, then that's usually a result of the process, not necessarily because of a coin flip somewhere. And one thing that I can imagine is that you might have missing values when you're dealing with, let's say, extreme values. Just to mention a intuitive example, let's pretend that there are sensor readings, and sometimes the values are just so high that the sensor just gives up. Well then, the fact that there's a value missing may actually imply that there's a high value that's missing, and never a medium value that's missing. So that gives us kind of two options. Given that something like that is happening, what would maybe be the best thing? Do we want to replace the missing value with the mean? Or would it be better to perhaps try and learn from the missing value patterns? Now, if I take the example with the temperature reading, then I hope that you would agree that this is not preferable. If missing values imply that there's an extreme value instead, then replacing it with the mean is probably going to confuse the algorithm that follows. However, if you have an algorithm that can actually try and learn something from these not available number patterns and when they happen and how they relate to a label, then that would definitely be a good thing. I want to be a little bit careful here because there are also other ways to do imputing. Let me call that fancy imputing for now. And the stuff that I'm talking about here are things like maybe adding a flag in your data. If these are the X values going in, let's say, then you might think, oh, if there's a missing value over here, we can have a flag column, so to say. And whenever there's a missing value in a specific column, 
that flag will be set to 1, and it will be 0 everywhere else. And if you do stuff like this, I can imagine that you're going to have this risk less and less. But in general, it is sure a whole lot more convenient as a first pass to just use an algorithm that kinda can do this under the hood on your behalf. And that's the main point I want to try and get at here. The histogram boosted models inside of scikit-learn support this missing values feature natively. And honestly, more than anything else, it is just convenient that you don't have to worry about this initially. And that is something that I hope you can at least appreciate. Even if there are other methods to do imputing that have less risks, the fact that you don't necessarily have to worry about it right away, that is the main feature I want to drive home here.